Welcome to the Wall Street Journal's kitchen, which for the last few weeks has also been my brewery. I'm here today with Seth Manser. He is the president of the San Francisco Homebrewers Guild, and we're here to talk about beer and to taste some of the beer that I made. Oh, sounds fun. Um, the idea of homebrew has always terrified me. Um, you do a lot of homebrew. Like, yes. how much homebrew do you do? Uh, probably a batch a month, uh, but I do brew in a larger volume. I do about like 10, gallons. 10 gallons. 10 so. gallons? So how much space does this take up in your house? <laughs> it takes up a good portion of the basement if you include all the fermentation vessels and all the other kind of cooling equipment and stuff. So, uh, What was the first beer that you made like? Uh, it was a lawnmower IPA and it was uh, not that good. <laughs> it was actually, uh, the joke in home brewing is the very first beer you make is not going to taste very good. There's a lot of variables you have to take into account. Usually you don't hit all those on the first batch. So now there's companies, um, in particular Pico Brew. Yep that are trying to make making beer something closer to uh, making one of those coffee pods. Yeah, like a Keurig. In, yeah, like a Keurig, yeah. right. This isn't cheating though? I mean, it's uh, not. I, I, I think some people would probably call it cheating. Uh, there's definitely a large do-it-yourself mentality to the homebrewing community. Um, but at the same time, I'd rather have more people making their own beer, trying it out. I think you're gonna find this fascinating, so why don't we Make some beer. Yeah, it sounds here. like a plan. All right, so as promised, it comes sweet. in a pod. These are my hops. Oh, nice. Now I just have to fill up the um, tank here with water. Oh, okay. Okay. We're ready to brew. That's what it looks like. So I go to brew Pico Pack. <laughs> it knows what it is, Plinius Maximus. Yeah. And I just say, uh, start brewing. <laughs> and then the noises start. So we're back. It's been a week, and Seth has very um, kindly agreed to come back and try my third batch of brew. Now, last week, when I asked you to try my first batch of brew, you really didn't like it. Huh. In your own words, describe this. It's a, a wet mess. <laughs> so this is a, you, you struck it out of the park for being making bad beer. Last <laughs> time, um, I didn't attach the nozzles correctly. The company says they've fixed a software update that that uh, won't ever happen again. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, the second one, uh, it turns out it got way too hot when I was fermenting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we tasted the downside of that. I'm getting like a little bit of like wet gym sock. Just a touch, yeah. Third time's the charm, maybe. They fixed the software and I fermented this in the Wall Street Journal San Francisco Bureau's server room, <laughs> which has been a very consistent kind of 65 to 67 degrees, uh, no more 90 degree days yep. or nights for my, my beer. Let's uh, taste some beer. Okay. Yeah, so you don't have quite as much of the bright hop aroma. A little acidic, almost. It's interesting. Last part of the taste, you get a little bit of that sweetness left over. Uh huh. So that's uh, unfermented sugars. Um, so it needs to ferment some more, you think? Yeah, I, I would say that even with the fast ferment process, this probably could have sat on the yeast a little bit longer. Well, cheers. This, cheers. Is, this is still much better. Thank <laughs> There's you. There's still a lot to go, though. Progress. Yeah, progress. <laughs>